investigating the murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce in 1987. Seen the offences, but I don't really want to go into detail. Yeah. Okay. Um, I appreciate that. And do, you, do you know how many occasions, David? No. No. Did you record their names? Yes. Okay. Did you record their ages? Yes. Okay. The investigating officer who provided support to the David Fuller investigation. If we think back to 1987 when Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce were murdered, DNA was in its infancy. We didn't know the strength and the possibility of it. When people are arrested or they are charged or reported for an offence, law enforcement take a profile from them, which is sent off coded and then it stores that code. Also on there, around 650,000 crime scenes stained, so that's unidentified suspects effectively. Each one of those is waiting for the individual to be arrested, their profile to be taken, and then it will effectively be like on a slot machine, that identification being made. When that profile is loaded on through science, through algorithms, they will narrow that profile down to a more manageable population. And in the case of David Fuller, it ultimately come down to a population of around 90 people. The officers work their way through those lists, which would lead to David Fuller's front door. You've been linked as a suspect, both geographically and forensically. Right, David, you're under arrest. David, did you murder Wendy Nell? Did you murder Caroline Pitts? Hands on your head, stay where you are, you're under arrest. An excellent example of where familiar DNA has been used early on in the investigation is the murder of Nicole Swan and Beaver Henry because it identified the suspect early on in the investigation he was not known on the National DNA Database. David Fuller, the bedsit killer and the depraved morgue monster, will die in prison after being sentenced to two life sentences. A timeline of his crimes, David Fuller, the heinous rapist of the morgue. It was in 1973 when Fuller was convicted of 26 counts of burglary at the address where he had grown up in a terraced house in Angerstein Road, Portsmouth. On the evening of June 23, 1987, a boyfriend of Mrs. Nell found her body in her apartment in Guilford Road. Her bloodstained head was resting on a towel, and the bed, duvet, and pillows were bloodstained as well. There were no signs of forced entry found by the police, and neighbors were not able to hear anything through the thin walls of the apartment. On November 24, 1987, the manager of a popular restaurant, Ms. Pierce, is killed by a man named Fuller. In spite of this, it is not until three weeks later, when her naked body, apart from a pair of tights, is found in the water-filled dike of a remote field in Romney Marsh, Kent, that her body is discovered. Fuller began his career as an electrical maintenance craftsman at Kent and Sussex Hospitals and Tunbridge Wells Hospital in January 1989. As of 2008, there has been evidence that Fuller filmed and photographed himself sexually abusing the bodies of dozens of women in the mortuaries. During the course of 2012, the Kent police revealed that they had a complete DNA profile of the prime suspect in the murder cases of Ms. Nell and Ms. Pierce. 
Fuller has to undergo a criminal record check for the first time since it was revealed Jimmy Seville sexually assaulted patients a number of years ago. The investigation has revealed that in the 1970s, he was convicted of burglaries. It is understood that he lied about these convictions in the past. The killer was identified as Fuller in December of 2020 after DNA analysis of DNA material found at the crime scene and a search of criminal databases for Fuller's relatives proved he was the prime suspect in the murders. He was arrested by police in the early hours of December 3rd at his home in Heathfield, East Sussex, where he lived with his family. On January 20, 2021, Fuller admitted responsibility for both murders before Maidstone Crown Court, but his barrister said that he would deny murder on the grounds of diminished responsibility. It was later discovered that he had been charged with additional offenses related to the sexual abuse of more than 100 victims. As his trial gets underway, Fuller changes his plea from not guilty to guilty on November 4, 2021. Moreover, he admits to having committed another 51 crimes relating to sexually abusing at least 102 victims, of which at least 82 can be identified, in several mortuaries over the course of a decade. Fuller will appear for sentencing at Maidstone Crown Court on December 15, 2021. In last month's trial, the murdered pervert, aged 67, pleaded guilty to the murders of Wendy Nell, 25, and Caroline Pierce, 20. The two women were beaten and strangled to death in two separate attacks by Fuller in Tunbridge Wells, Kent, in 1987 before being sexually assaulted. Furthermore, he admitted a further 51 offenses related to sexually abusing at least 102 victims, of whom 82 have been identified, at the mortuaries of Kent, Sussex and Tunbridge Wells hospitals over more than a decade. One of his youngest victims was just 9 years old, two were 16 years old, and the oldest victim was 100 years old. We may never be able to learn the identities of the remaining 20 victims. Ms. Fuller was sentenced to two whole life sentences on Wednesday by Maidstone Crown Court for the murders of Ms. Nell and Ms. Pierce. The deceased females were also sentenced to concurrent sentences totaling 12 years for the sexual abuse of which they were convicted. Having joined Levi Belfield in serving two lifetime prison sentences, he is the first criminal in the history of UK law to have served such an order twice, along with Millie Dowler, Marsha McDonnell and Amelie de Lagrange. As the judge said at Fuller's sentencing today, she said that Fuller was like a vulture picking victims out of the dead, adding the depravity of what you did reveals a conscience that is wounded. Fuller filmed himself carrying out the attacks inside hospitals, where he worked as a technician for an electrical maintenance company. It is believed that he kept records of his serial sex offenders on computer folders under various titles such as Necrolord, Register, Deadly, Deadliest, and Best Yet. The folders contained names, numbers, and dates, as well as images of a mortuary logbook that he created to record his own list of those he defiled. While there were no CCTV cameras in the area of the mortuary where the sexual assaults took place, Fuller was found to have researched many of his victims via Facebook after the attacks. On the day of the sentencing hearing, the victim's family members spoke about the impact of the crime on them. In the letter she wrote to her baby, Fuller's youngest victim, a nine-year-old girl, she addressed him directly, saying, David, you know who I am because you read the letter I wrote to my little one. The woman continued to say, you raped my baby. It was impossible to say no to the dirty 66-year-old man who was abusing her body. The fact that I left her there makes me feel guilty. There will never be a time when I will enjoy my life again. It is impossible for me to recover from this unnatural illness. A widower of another woman told him, David, when you are serving your time behind bars, think carefully about what you have accomplished and thank your lucky stars that I will not be sharing a cell with you. Mrs. Justice Chima Grubb QC told the killer today that these were premeditated killings which had been carefully planned and executed. When the judge ordered Fuller to stand at the mercy of the judge, he said, you had no respect for the dignity of the dead. In sum, you have spent the majority of your life living a relatively ordinary life despite your outward presence. It has been said of you that you are a man of strong character under pressure, yet when sequestered you commit acts of the deepest darkness. I have been transformed into a vulture who hunts down his victims among the dead in the hidden world of hospital mortuaries, which I am free to inhabit simply because I have a swipe card. In light of what you did, your conscience is seared by the depravity of what you did. In light of this, you will spend the rest of your life in prison. A farm worker discovered Ms. Pierce's body in a water-filled dike near St. Mary in the Marsh, near Romney Marsh, on the 34th anniversary of her disappearance. On that date, Fuller was sentenced to life in prison. According to Duncan Atkinson QC, 
the prosecutor for the claimant, Fulter was first employed as an electrical maintenance craftsman at the NHS Trust in January 1989, moving up the ranks to maintenance supervisor in March 2002, and then to a state supervisor from May 2011. The official charged David Fuller with systematic and repeated sexual abuse of the bodies of dead women and girls found in both the mortuaries of the two hospital facilities that he had access to. It was not uncommon for him to be the last person at the mortuary at the end of the day. There is evidence that he spent time with his victims beyond the abuse they had filmed of him and that he had access to them through a swipe card. As a photographer and a filmmaker, he used a personal digital camera to capture images of it and to record his activities. Then, he stored records of those activities on hard drives hidden in his office at home. There were also photographs of deceased women being sexually abused, and it is possible to see that it was the defendant who was abusing them. A number of family members of the victim were also heard making impact statements to the court during the sentencing hearing before Mrs. Justice Chima Grubb. The mother of Ms. Nell, Pamela Nell, told the court that she had not been the same since her daughter's body was discovered. Oftentimes, she would find herself crying outside at 3 a.m. without having any idea how she got there, since she had cut down everything in her garden because it shouldn't be living. She told the court how she had given up caring about how her house looked, and that her friends would cross the road to avoid her. A picture of Wendy was still in her hands, and she still said good night and good morning to it. In the letter she wrote to her baby, Fuller's youngest victim, a nine-year-old girl, she addresses him directly, saying, David, you know who I'm because you read the letter I wrote to my little one. It is said that she went to the mortuary every day, including Christmas Day, to be with her daughter, who died of complications related to a common cold. As the mother stated, she would dress her, brush her hair, and leave toys for her to play with, but when she left, Fuller would walk into the room and abuse her daughter. She told the judge that it was Fuller who had tainted those memories. She told the court, I can't say much of what I want to say to you right now, in my mind you raped my child. It was impossible for her to say no to the dirty 66-year-old man who was abusing her body. She felt guilty when she left her there. I will not be able to enjoy my life again. As unfair and heartbreaking as her death was, it was also a natural thing that I was beginning to come to terms with. There will never be an end to this unnatural pain that I will never be able to overcome. One of the fathers of the 18-year-old victim, when he said goodbye to his daughter, said the only comfort we held onto was how peaceful she looked when we said goodbye. This was destroyed when we received a knock at the door from the police to inform us that my wife had been abused by a man whom she had grown up fearing. Our girl's innocence has been stolen by Fuller, while our souls have been shattered by him. I am consumed by anger. A widower of another woman told him, David, when you are serving your time behind bars, think carefully about what you have accomplished and thank your lucky stars that I will not be sharing a cell with you. There were also demands made by the families for a public inquiry and for MPs to consider rewriting the laws relating to necrophilia. The offense currently carries a maximum sentence of just two years in jail. I am admitting the offenses, but I don't really want to go into detail. Yeah. No. Okay. We appreciate that. And do you, do you know how many occasions, David? No. No. Did you record their names? Yes. Okay. Did you record their ages? Yes. Okay. Last month, Health Secretary Sajid Javid ordered a public inquiry into the case to determine if he could have been prevented from doing so. During his court appearance today, he told the court, this is a very distressing case. It is impossible to undo the damage that has already been done, but at least David Fuller has been brought to justice for his unspeakable crimes today, which at least is a positive development. It is with my sincere regret that I must apologize to the friends and families of all those who lost their lives on that fateful day. I sincerely hope that a similar incident will never take place in the future. Boris Johnson, the British Prime Minister, added the pain caused by David Fuller's unimaginable crimes will never be undone, but I hope some comfort can be found in the fact that he will spend the remainder of his days behind bars. I would like to express my condolences to the families and friends of his victims who have demonstrated incredible bravery today in court. Kent police have announced that a team of investigators will spend the next year combing through Fuller's sordid past to see if he's behind any other cold cases of missing women involving missing women. In the courtyard outside Maidstone Crown Court, Detective Chief Superintendent Paul Fotheringham of Kent Police stated, We have a team dedicated to this case, 
and we are looking into other cases of missing girls and rapes across the southeast of England. It is expected that we will spend about a year reviewing these cases in this area, perhaps more. Despite the fact that there is no evidence that he had committed any other crimes, there is a possibility he had, and we are going to dig into this and investigate every aspect of his life to see if we can find any proof of him committing any other crimes. Kent police also stated that almost 750 calls came into their dedicated appeal line set up after Fuller changed his double murder plea to guilty after changing his plea to guilty. The DNA breakthrough that led to Fuller's being identified as the prime suspect in the murders of Ms. Nell and Ms. Pierce was the result of analyzing the genetic material found at the crime scenes and searching criminal databases to find his relatives. In spite of the fact that the electrician was completely unknown to police, officers discovered a partial match with one of his relatives by looking through the database for 1,000 people who could be related to the killer. In the early hours of December 3rd last year, two police officers arrested Fuller at his home in Heathfield, East Sussex, where he lived with his family, as a result of an investigation. Police reported that he did not seem surprised, but denied that he was involved in the case and that he was not familiar with the area where the women lived. During a search of his home, the police discovered hard drives, floppy disks, and CDs that contained 14 million images of sexual offenses, including video of him committing the heinous acts. It was discovered that he had also attacked corpses in images. So far, investigators have discovered around 100 potential victims, but they have revealed that their identities may never be revealed. Several victims were abused more than once, and some of them were abused both before and after post-mortem examinations. In conclusion, Mr. Atkinson said that the man when he was interviewed stated that he wanted to admit the offenses, but he did not want to discuss them. He said that he didn't remember the first time it had happened. It was agreed that he would keep a record of the names and ages of the people he had assaulted, but he denied that he had committed the offenses for sexual pleasure. He said the offenses were not planned, he said. He would find out the names of the people by the tags on their arms. He thought the oldest victim he was going to kill was 60, 70 and the youngest 9. On eight separate occasions, his Facebook account was linked to the victims. In its hearing, the court also heard that the hard drives contained research under the headings rape and murder, depicting images of deceased women who have been ripped naked, or who have been strangled and slashed, or who appear to be dead, but have been abused. Adding to this, the prosecution stated that this entire history is aggravating because it demonstrates a bizarre and deeply held interest in rape, murder, and abuse of women who have died. The body of Mrs. Nell was discovered by her boyfriend in her apartment in Guilford Road on June 23, 1987. There was blood all over the bed, duvet, and pillows, as well as her blood-stained head resting on a towel. There were no signs of forced entry found by police, and neighbors heard nothing through the thin walls of the flat. Five months after her kidnapping, on November 24, Miss Pierce was snatched outside her home in Grosvenor Park, London. During the time she is believed to have been abducted, her neighbors heard screams coming from the direction of the cemetery next to her flat. Several hours after she was last seen, her body was found by a farm worker driving a tractor around the edge of a field on December 15, some 40 miles away in a water-filled dike near St. Mary in the marsh near Romney Marsh. There was no clothing on her except for a pair of tights. In both cases, the victims had suffered severe blunt force injuries to their heads and both had suffered injuries of compression of the neck by strangulation, any of which could have been the cause of their deaths as well as having suffered similar injuries during past sexual assaults. Initially, Fuller denied the murders on the grounds that he had diminished responsibility for the crime, but he later changed his plea midway through his trial after a report was compiled on his mental capacity. Furthermore, he admitted to committing a further 51 other offenses, including the sexual penetration of a corpse, possessing an extreme pornographic image involving sexual interference with the corpse, and taking indecent pictures of children. With his front of middle class domesticity and respectability, Fuller was able to get away with his crimes for nearly 35 years. The few people who knew him were, at least casually, able to describe him as a family man, a thrice married father of four and a seemingly doting husband and father. If he had not been identified, investigators believe that without a doubt he would have continued to commit crimes. The mother of one of his victims was previously quoted as saying that her daughter, Azra Kamal, 24, was violated at least three times while in the morgue at Tunbridge Wells Hospital. In July of last year, Azra Fallon, a researcher for Sky News, 
died when she fell from a bridge as she fled a car that had caught fire on the A21 and burst into flames. Her body was raped three times by Fuller while it was being kept in the Tunbridge Wells Hospital morgue once shortly after her mother arrived to say her last goodbye to her. For necrophilia cases, Nevers Kamal told the court her focus was on increasing the sentence from two years to five years. As she addressed the judge, Fuller was described as insignificant. According to Detective Chief Superintendent Fotheringham, Fuller's actions have caused incalculable suffering and devastation to the lives of hundreds of people. He also stated that David Fuller is responsible for a level of offending of unimaginable horror and depravity with which he is associated. He murders two young women who were in the prime of their lives, seemingly just to satisfy his own warped desires, and leaves behind a trail of incomprehensible suffering for the families and friends of Wendy and Caroline for the last three decades. He also caused suffering and inconceivable trauma in the lives of hundreds of other people, most of whom were still grieving the loss of loved ones because of his apparent actions. The fact that Fuller has only shown a capacity to self-pity throughout our investigation doesn't suggest he has shown any remorse for his many victims or the appalling crimes he committed. There is no doubt that the fact that today's sentencing will provide some form of closure or comfort to all those who have been affected by Fuller's heinous actions. Knowing at least that Fuller will spend the rest of his life in prison should be quite sufficient. Miles Scott, the chief executive officer of the Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells NHS Foundation Trust, said in a statement that he apologized yet again for the pain caused to the families as a result of these appalling crimes. There will be no further improvements recommended from the independent inquiry, and we have already done a risk assessment for our mortuary, including assuring ourselves in accordance with existing Human Tissue Authority guidelines. This was a horrific case, Fuller's depraved offending was off the scale, said criminal investigator Noel McHugh, from the NCA's Major Crime Investigative Support Unit. Our thoughts will always be with the victims and their families. Throughout this investigation, the agency has provided extensive investigative support, particularly in relation to DNA analysis. The NCA is very proud to have helped Kent Police bring justice to the families of Wendy, Caroline, and many others who were victims of Fuller's crimes.